No, there we go. Okay, well, thanks for joining us. We may be joined by others uh, as time goes on. So this is our fifth or sixth? Yeah, definitely sixth, I think. Sixth yeah. annual report card of political parties in the fight against glyphosate. Uh, so as we've seen over the last uh, eight years now, hmm, eight years is that this has gone from a non-issue in New Brunswick politics to being one of the dominant issues in New Brunswick politics. However, our political parties have not quite kept pace with the public interest in this. And so this is why this year um, we're looking at the PC ratings, which are F, why? Well, because they haven't done anything. And in fact, if anything, they keep saying it's a non-issue, just like they do with the neurological disease and other things that may be linked to glyphosate, that these are all non-issues. Um, so they get an F. The Liberal Party gets a C plus, which is a big jump up for them. And the reason why is because Susan Holt has engaged with us. Um, her main concern is that her constituents haven't made it very clear about how big of an issue it is, but other Liberal MLAs have, and they're far more active this time around than they were in the previous election cycle. So we have hopes that this time around, um, the new uh, Liberal Party candidates will be much more engaged in the next election cycle on the issue and to hear it more from their representatives. The Green Party gets a B. Although they didn't table a motion this year, they have been regularly bringing it out within the public sphere. So we've gone a long way from where we were five years ago uh, when this was really something that nobody was really engaged on for this to be where the political sphere has engaged on the issue of glyphosate, but still nobody's done anything about it. We still don't have a motion that is going to end this. And the very simple fact that if we wanted glyphosate to end a uh, sprain in the forest to end tomorrow, simply the government doesn't issue licenses. This in no way violates the agreement they have with the forestry companies because they are not obligated to provide licenses without due diligence and looking at taking precautions to protect the public. So there's no reason why, for example, if the Liberals were to get in in the next election cycle, they could simply not issue spray licenses. Yeah, take it away, Carolyn. Yeah, so, um, well, during this session, uh, of course, actually the session ended and then our government um, released the new uh, or updated forest strategy. And of course, a very prominent thing in that forest strategy is that up to 80% will not be allowed to be turned into plantations, which of course means that now 20% of our crown forests are going to be turned into plantations. It's been 50% up to now. So that's a five percent, that's quite an increase. It's actually a 30, a third of larger, 33% increase. So in the forest strategy, there's no clear language whether um, he, there's sort of a mention of uh, hoping that we won't use herbicides for it, but there's nothing, there's no clear directive from the minister that no herbicides are to be used in the additional plantations. And that's the problem with the whole forest strategy. There's a lot of vague languages, language going on. And some of it is as well related to the recommendations that were um, you know, given by the standing committee uh, almost two years ago, uh, November of 2021. Um, and, and I have looked, very hard to find actual uh, recording of what they're going to uh, adopt, you know? So we see nothing. All we saw in that forest strategy is that there's gonna be so many more hectares of buffer land, but there's nothing specific. So we see no mention of how far from water it can be or how far from dwellings it can be or how far it can be from people's wells. Uh, the only thing that, that we see is that uh, it has to be, uh, you know, a certain number of kilometers uh, away from the uptake of a drinking watershed. But but there's just too much vague language and, you know, that is really not helpful. So, uh, you know, to, to us, that's just not, not good enough. So, you know, if they were going to come out with something, we need specific language. We're not seeing that. And also the big issue is where is the enforcement? So there is no enforcement schedule. There's no reports on the enforcement on this. So they can say whatever they want. But the fact is we're getting reports back that this is just not the case. There is not wide enough buffer zones being created. They are spraying close to the watersheds. 
So what we see is that actually there's no real enforcement schedule in place. There's no reports coming out of the department. It's just like any issue of the, um, uh, the uh, increased amount of conserved land. Well, we've been told by the Department of Natural Resources that their way of conservation is to clear cut first, spray, and then declare to conserve. Sorry, I don't think that would meet any international standards for conservation. Old growth is cut, harvested, and then it's conserved. Mm -hmm. So what, 50 years down the road, we'll have a nice forest? So a lot of the stuff is extremely vague. Nothing is very clear and nothing is really being enforced from the side of NRED. Yeah. Stop spraying New Brunswick is calling on the Minister of Natural Resources, Mike Holland, to put an immediate moratorium on all forest herbicide spraying in watersheds that New Brunswickers rely on for their drinking water. Their online map of the current spray licenses show a significant number of spray areas just outside the boundary of protected watersheds as drawn by the province of New Brunswick. But in fact, the true boundaries of these watersheds are significantly larger. We're calling also on the mayors of towns and cities to speak up for the protection of their surface water drinking supplies. Approximately 40% of New Brunswickers get their drinking water from these surface watersheds. That is the, the land that drains streams, lakes, and rivers. Yeah, I mean, I, this is where we've seen probably the most traction and is in terms at the municipal level. Uh, the mayor of Moncton, Don Arnold, has been uh, very good about uh, putting it out about the tar Turtle Creek Reservoir. And I think this needs to be uh, increased in terms of municipalities themselves can declare that they don't want spraying in their area. So this is where we would really hope that the new amalgamated communities would jump up and have their voices heard. It's clear that this is an issue for New Brunswickers. Right. We have the largest petition in the history of the province on the issue. We have the biggest group in Canada working on this issue in our little province. So clearly New Brunswickers care that spraying stops. So now it's up to the municipalities and it's up to the government to just not issue spray licenses. That's it. That will solve the problem until we can get a little bit more actual research, especially about things like the neurological disease, mysterious neurological disease, which can be linked to glyphosate as we've seen. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, what we really need to see is a bipartisan collaboration, you know, between the political parties that this cannot be a partisan issue. It, it clearly isn't a partisan issue, but the political parties need to see it that way and they need to start working together. You know, we know that the Green Party is very much opposed to this. The Liberal Party has certainly sent signals uh, that they are in support of doing something about this. Um, you know, the environment critic um, MLA uh, from up north. Um, you know, he said, made some comments in the legislature when he tabled uh, a whole pile of letters that we collected during the Moncton Sportsman Show at the end of March. And, and um, you know, he mentioned we are ready to cooperate. So, you know, we need to see more than words. So, you know, it, it's about time. It, it's just really frustrating because this issue has been a big issue, you know, since probably very big issue since 2018, but it was already you know, gaining steam politically before that. And the government has just had five years to, to really just postpone dealing with this, you know, constantly having excuses. First, the standing committee hearings, we had to wait for that, which of course was postponed. Then we had to wait another so many months before that report came out. Then the government just doesn't act on it, even though the report clearly said within six months, we need to see these recommendations adopted. So here we are almost two years later, and then we get this strategy that uh, basically gives us nothing and, you know, we're five years further and the, for, the big forestry companies have had five more years of doing whatever they want. You know, it, it, but, I mean, with the government's uh, permission, of course. Bless you, man. Yeah. So uh, then the other issue that, that, that we like to bring forward is that we want, you know, um, definitely an immediate moratorium on all forest herbicide spraying and watersheds that New Brunswickers rely on for their drinking water. Um, you know, there's a lot of concern. Uh, like we said, there's this mysterious uh, neurological disease of unknown origin that has clusters that seem to be kind of correlating with surface water uh, drinking watersheds. So again, we don't know what the cause is, but why continue a practice if it's not sure, you know, that this is actually okay. So um, what we've noticed is that um, the watersheds that, you know, when you look at the watershed groups in New Brunswick, 
the actual watersheds are much larger than the watersheds sheds that the government has decided to map as protected watersheds. So you're seeing borders around, say, Turtle Creek that are actually not clear borders. The, the, the actual basin is much larger. So, you know, we're getting the, the story from the government. Well, you know, there's a few spray blocks right outside the watershed. So it's fine because it's not in the watershed. But that's not how watersheds work. And the watersheds group, you know, they notice they work. Look, look at the Petakodiak watershed. It's huge. You know, so so there is a, a discrepancy between what the government is deci has decided should be a protected watershed and what is actually a watershed. You, the water just doesn't stop. You know, it's not a bathtub that you stick in a pool and the water doesn't mix. It just doesn't work that way. So, you know, we feel that, um, you know, these these watersheds have been in a way gerrymandered by the government. And this this happened, you know, probably about nine, 10 years ago. But now, because of this issue with the drinking water concerns, you know, this is this is becoming important. Uh, it was already always important, but now it's becoming extra important because of the additional risks that, that we foresee. Um, I don't know if Don wants to say no. anything more. Again? Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Um, yeah. I just want to point uh, the media, uh, our supporters know it, but we have uh, maps that we've created using data from the government, both uh, historical spray maps and the 2023 spray license map that basically syncs with all the data that the government puts out. So it's using government data, but we've made it so that you can actually uh, view it and, and make sense of it. Okay, that's it for today, I guess. <laughs> Any questions? I just want to reiterate oh, yeah. what, what you said, Carolyn. It's not a partisan problem. It's yeah. not, it's, it yeah. affects every New Brunswicker. Yeah. It affects our children, our grandparents, and ourselves. And, uh, you know, there's data about from Dr. Matthew Betts of how it's affecting the forest bird species too. Yeah. It's affecting the animals. And, and I mean, we all eat from the animals and plants and things that are grown here in New Brunswick. So this affects everyone, regardless of their political party. And uh, it's time for, for people to speak up. And it's simply wrong to compromise the safety of drinking water like this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hi okay. there. Oh, yeah. It's, can you hear me? Yes, I'm just turning on jean Fro as well. jean Fro. Yes, oh, yeah. I just, yeah, OK, go ahead, Erica. They do it themselves. Oh, sure. I was just wondering, could, I, could you each introduce yourselves? Just like give me a bit of a bit of a bio, kind of, or not, not a full bio, but you know, just give me a bit of an introduction. Yeah, so uh, my name is Carolyn Luba Darcy. I'm the chair of Stop Spraying New Brunswick. And I'm a practicing dentist in Fredericton. And uh, as, as we uh, have explained in the past, we're a volunteer run, uh, not for profit, uh, non charitable advocacy group. Yeah, I'm Don Bowser. I uh, international consultant on governance issues, corruption mostly, but also head up an organization in Ukraine looking at research and analysis. Um, Yes, and the co-chair of uh, Stop Train New Brunswick for far too long, <laughs> I would say. So Carol and I sort of started this. Kim? And I'm Kimberly Cobb, and I'm a board member of Stop Spraying New Brunswick. It's an important issue to me. And uh, by trade, I work as a licensed practical nurse at a nursing home in Albert County. We have two more board members, but they couldn't be here because their jobs, uh, you know, needed them today. So, Okay. Um. I think it was Carolyn, you mentioned something that you, you put a little bit of a call out for mayors of towns and cities. Um, it, the uh, the transmission broke up a bit there. I was wondering if you could repeat that call. Because you that said that, that, they, that they need to protect their watershed, right? Yeah. No, it doesn't matter who does. Yeah. Go okay. That. Well, basically what, what we want to see is that the, the municipalities, you know, um, look at at uh, the water quality of their own within their own borders and they need to start speaking up for the safety of of um, you know for their citizens and we know that um you know there's a group that's um that that approached their i mean that, that's probably your the people that you're really so why don't you talk about that yeah so i think it was me that said we're calling on the mayors of towns and cities okay. to speak up for the protection of their surface water drinking supplies Approximately 40% of New Brunswickers get their drinking water from these surface watersheds, and that is the land that drains streams, lakes, and rivers. So that's what I had said, and I hadn't talked about the advocacy. There is an advocacy group in my area on the New Ireland Road that is uh, calling for the stopping of spraying in that area where people live and eat and drink and hunt, and uh, they are looking to stop some of the spraying in that area. They've been camped out there for, for weeks and we commend them for their actions. 
Yeah, and they managed to convince their town council to start water testing in their in their area. Yeah, we've had many other communities step up. Yeah, right? so Moncton was one of the ones that we mentioned, yes. but we also had Sackville had a motion. Where else was uh, up north? There were a bunch different yeah. ones in the uh, yeah in the Acadian Peninsula, and and but the thing they were resolutions, but we don't know of any actual concrete action. So the resolution was that they support this um, campaign. But we haven't seen much. I haven't really heard of any action beyond that by 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 those communities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Can you? Uh, you know. You mentioned this call for a moratorium. It's really a call to redefine watershed areas, right? Uh. Because the rules do currently say that you can't spray in a defined watershed. But what you're saying is those defined watersheds are not realistic. And yeah, you need to redefine the watershed areas as as much larger. Um, you know how big how big could they get? Because really, there is like everywhere is a watershed somewhere. Yeah. Well, so I send you big some map. Uh, some mapping has been done. I mean, there is a map of all the watershed groups, of course, and then there is a, a, a some indigenous um, you know watershed people have mapped every uh, single watershed. Uh, so there are maps of the watersheds, and of course the watershed groups have a much larger area that they look after. But for some reason, uh, you know, when it was 2014 or so, uh, that's when the government decided to redefine the boundaries of, of what they consider, consider as what should be protected. So that is definitely something that needs to be questioned. But we are really calling for, you know, no spraying anywhere. But but in light of the, the recent you know, uh, concerns around drinking water, uh, that aspect, of course, we're highlighting that. And also, where is the enforcement from the government? So do we have any records of NRED actually enforcing the regulations or the or the Department of the Environment? And what we're hearing from people on the ground is they are spraying extremely close to water sources. So they're spraying on rivers, they're spraying on lakes. It's also because they do aerial spraying, it's very easy for this to go over. We've had two cases that we know of where people have been sprayed simply because of the inaccuracy of the spray. So where's the enforcement on this? And there isn't. This is the, one of the biggest problems we have. New Brunswick government keeps playing this game that they're trying to be good about conservation. But the fact is they hide all the data they make sure that nobody can verify what they're doing. We don't even know where the spray planes are going unless we track them ourselves. So this is one of the points is that there is very little data coming out of the government to look at these issues. So they can say anything they want. They can say that we have a hundred kilometer around watersheds, but if there's no enforcement and if there's no data to show that the rules are being enforced, and we know from anecdotal evidence and video of people on the spot, that this isn't the case. So this is one of the big uh, issues as well. Yeah, and you know, we're getting people that are into the outdoors activities such as anglers and hunters, you know, they're, they're seeing what it's doing to the streams. So, you know, the, the fish, are, the people that like to fish are seeing what it does in the streams and the hunters are seeing it, uh, how it affects wildlife. And there was one fisherman who was on the water who thinks that he got sprayed because the spray came so close to him. And that was last week. Um, so in terms of uh, your thoughts on the forestry plan, basically, I I'm getting that you're concerned that the end result of this will will be a net increase in in the acreage that gets sprayed in this province. Is that right? Well, that concern is there. The government hasn't come out and said it. Of well, they've declared that they will do more, <laughs> more plantations. Right? Yeah. yeah, they're going to do 20 percent plantation. So there's, the, the intensification of our for, uh, forest practices is increasing. And um, sadly, it's not being matched by meaningful conservation at the other end. You know, that that's the that's the really bad thing that that, you know, if you had really serious conservation, you might be able to understand some intensive forestry without spraying. We don't want spraying, period. And it can be done. You know, in, in, in Quebec, they do uh, forestry practices since 2001. They haven't used herbicides. Maine has been concerned about it as well. So the neighboring jurisdictions are concerned about this and have taken action. But New Brunswick refuses to. Again, why? Why would you not, if there was even a remote chance that this leads to harmful things, look at alternatives or to simply pause issuing spray licenses until such time as you can determine this? The fact is, 
We don't investigate it. We don't look at it. You can't even get tested for glyphosate in New Brunswick. And yet somehow the government insists that it's completely safe. So this goes against all international practices, right? Well, and if you look at the chief medical officer's report on glyphosate, when you look at um, pattern of use in, in New Brunswick compared to the rest of Canada or the rest of the world, yeah. you'll see how unique we are. You know, and then and then the, the thing is that, okay, BC, Ontario, and, and, and New Brunswick are the most, get the most glyphosate landing on their forests, but BC and Ontario are much larger provinces. We are a province that's quite small with communities everywhere. So the difference here compared to say BC and Ontario is that this is happening around almost, you know, all rural communities are experiencing it in some, yeah. in some way, whereas in BC and Ontario, not to downplay it, but it's less noticeable to the lion's share of the population because it's happening up north. So and you've got a very small population even knowing what's going on there. And the percentage of yeah. use is more intense in yeah. forestry in New Brunswick than anything than else. anywhere else. Yeah. It's sixty-four percent of all glyphosate is dumped on the forest. We see very little in agriculture, so that's why you know whenever we see government, uh, uh, the government or elected people trying to deflect from that, you know they're just not being factual. Glyphosate use in, in agriculture is 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 very minimal in New Brunswick. It's about eleven percent of all the glyphosate used here. Where's and where's the rest going? So eleven percent agricultural, sixty-four percent forestry. Then the rest is what else are we industry. using it for? It's so industry. Rail lines, power lines, domestic use. Now, recently, of course, this chief medical officer report was uh, written in 2016. Um, NB Power has started using a different herbicide. It's Garlon XRT, which X behaves the same way as glyphosate. So they started using that, uh, I think, exclusively this year. They've been slowly kind of switching over. And I understand from when I listened to their presentation to the standing committee that some of it had to do maybe with some resistance problems. I'm not sure. But anyway, so, yeah, maybe the pattern, maybe the industry portion has become smaller because MB Power, which only sprays about 1,000 hectares per year. So it's it's not that much, right? Like compared to the 15,000 hectares on our crown lands. But we also, of course, are seeing glyphosate being used on private freehold land we don't that's not part of our campaign but that is part of it right so yeah but it's still you know in in total we're seeing industry and um uh, forestry as the main uses for glyphosate and very little for agriculture and you know the the chief medical officer's uh, office would have more details as to exactly what's in that 27 percent. they didn't put that in there in their um report, but we know that it has to be CN Rail, NB Power, other kinds of industry. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, maybe I'll just ask you one more quick question. H how do we compare to Nova Scotia on glyphosate? Much less. Uh, I think uh, Nova Scotia might have had 1,500 hectares of spraying last year. You know, they've got forestry issues as well, but I don't think uh, glyphosate use is their big issue. They don't, they don't, their government doesn't pay for uh, herbicide spraying. They, of course, also have way uh, less crown land than we do. And our government mainly sponsors the glyphosate spraying on crown land in New Brunswick. But Nova Scotia government does not pay for glyphosate spraying, and there is a lot less of it happening there. And they put other restrictions on it. So they recognize themselves as that they're trying to move away from it, like the other jurisdictions that surround New Brunswick. All right, folks. Um, thanks very much. I don't suppose offhand you know what year Sackville would have passed a a, a resolution. Uh, I think asking. it would have been possible either two two thousand seventeen or two thousand eighteen. I can look it up. Yeah. Okay. I don't have All it. Right. Right. And the Moncton yeah. one is uh, we have it online. Yeah, she was uh, in two thousand sixteen. Mayor uh, yeah. Arnold started making yeah. noise about it. Okay, so Sackville followed. Fortune on cleaning up their. You know, they're spending millions of dollars on the Turtle Creek watershed as we speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much. Thank right, you. Thanks. Hi, Jean Francois. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm all set for. Uh, I mean, you've been very clear. So, uh, for for my for me, I'm all I'm all set with uh, all what you said. So you okay. have no no other questions? No, I have no other question for my part. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey guys, thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye.